Welcome to Mesopotamian Storytelling with the ninth grade Roots of Civilizations class. My name is Jeff Mead and I'm a history teacher. We started a Twitter feed for the Roots class using the hashtag UprightMad to share class questions and thoughts and we use it to chat with historians, archaeologists, and storytelling professionals. We turn the study of Mesopotamia's explorations and civilization building into a creative writing project. Instead of a test on ancient Mesopotamia, students will write historical fiction. I first tasked the students to creatively design a civilization. What they did not know was that I was watching how they interacted and what they were each interested in contributing. Based on those observations, I gave each one of them a job specialization to explore Mesopotamia with. Using the avatar design website Doll Divine, each student built an avatar for their character. I started with an example of Enlil, Mesopotamian god of wind and weather. Students created avatars, which allows them to become an ancient Mesopotamian. These characters will be the basis of their story. Since I'm a historian and not a creative writer, I drew upon the expertise of Jillian Meyer, Madeira's creative writing teacher. She helped us think about important elements of creative writing, such as setting, atmosphere, story, and plot. Each day of the Mesopotamia unit had a creative writing warm-up. As practice one day, we took turns adding sentences to a class-wide collaborative story. We found out that creative writing isn't easy. So, we turned once again to Ms. Meyer to help us think about ways to structure creative writing. She drew a narrative arc on the board, walking through the creative writing process. Instead of me explaining the narrative arc, I'll let the real expert do that. Ms. Meyer, take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm Mr. Mead today. Actually, I'm Ms. Meyer. You know this. And I'm going to give you a lesson on narrative arcs and how to do the storytelling thing so that you can have an awesome project for yourselves and for your teacher. Um, so for those of you who've had me, this will look vaguely familiar, I hope. If it doesn't, whatever. I'm going to give you a review. This is your classic narrative arc. It's a um, visual organizer for you to make sure that you have a plan for your story. Um, and I'm going to combine two different things. We've got the ABDCE structure for classic short stories up here. Um, and then I'm also going to walk you through how to put the ABDCE structure into an arc so that you can see what you're doing. Um, for the bottom left-hand side, you're going to identify a problem. I have a really great um, instructor who told me that a story is about the day something different happens. This is the problem that we're dealing with. This is the difference, okay? So in my story, my lovely, wonderful woman has given birth to a demon, okay? Has demon baby. So in classic ABDCE structure, we start with the delivery room. When the lady has had contraction number 28 and gives forth the hoarded monstrosity that is her child. So, we start with the action and then we go, maybe, I don't know, in this one we're going to do three big things that happen as a result of her having had the baby. This is going to bring us through a little bit of backstory and development. So if this was a movie or if you were writing like a flashback, this is where you would go in your backstory. So she, um, met or meets a um, nice fellow at the park one day and then they get coffee and he tells her something amazing like um, I don't know I am a magical mythical unicorn um, And this, of course, makes her fall head over heels. And they get married. Then she's pregnant. He abandons her. And we know what happens then. She has the baby. OK, so the climax of this whole story is what does she do with this kid? Hmm, let's think about it. I want her to keep it, and they're going to move to the Isle of Wight because I think that sounds fun. Okay, so here's her decision. Keeps baby. Runs away from hospital where everybody's like, call the CDC, what is this monster? 
wants me. She's like, oh my god. So she hops off the delivery table and she like high heels it out of there. Um, goes to aisle of white. Okay, so all the stuff that happens next, it's like the ramifications of having made that decision, right? This is development into climax into ending, sort of all at one time on this side. So once once a demon has been born into the world, something is going to happen. We know that this is not going to end well. Um, but but there's a little bit of there's a little bit of time here where we could we could have hope for this happy little family. So she opens up a surf shop. But like all the people who come to the surf shop go out in the water and drown. Okay, so that doesn't go so well. Um, so they end up on the street. They live on the street in the Isle of Wight. Okay, so they're beggars. And every time somebody doesn't give them money, the kid like zaps them and they drop dead on the spot. Okay, people might be picking up on the fact that this is not a normal child. Um, so the islanders or the islers run them out of town. And they're like, you kids with your weird zappy fingers, you don't come back here anymore. Um, and so then the kid gets really angry. By this point, like, let's say 12 years have gone by. Um, and brings about Armageddon, like you do. So we leave our friends. I like to say we end, we don't resolve. So we end the story on a beautiful, peaceful, lush sort of jungle scene somewhere in the Amazon. And um, the only thing we see, like we zoom in really, really close, and it's just the kid with his weird little horns, like, you know, eating a coconut. And that's how we end the story. Kid, alone and happy in the jungle. Right there is how you tell the story. <laughs> so, question for you. Yeah, I'm coming back. This is a really nice structure for a story. I like that there's kind of three specific target points. Yeah. And then a lot of embellishment that goes on yes. to get from point A to point B yes. to point C. So, maybe that's something that we can think about with this particular project is think about. What is that initial action? How are we going to build that up and, right. and draw to it? Right. And then what is this particular climax of the story? Exactly. And then working back towards the end. So this is, I think those are the three points that I'll focus on and yep. then they can actually draw up the list of different things that go exactly. in the middle. So the question then is where would you, in this story, where would you specifically think about building out story elements like descriptive narrative setting around and setting and yeah. atmosphere and Definitely. character development so so the human brain works like this we remember the first thing we hear see do and we remember the last thing we hear see do right so that works for symphonies it works for pieces of art um, and there's a reason that sort of classic art and music and stories are all structured with something really impressive at the beginning and sort of really impressive at the end that's where you want to focus your attention when you're doing characterization and setting work. So when we, when we open up on our poor, poor mom in the delivery room, um, there's this thing in media res. You begin in the middle of things, right? So you, you paint the picture of a very specific place in a very specific time. Because this thing only happens once. We only have one demon baby. So in order for us to really understand the power of that, you've got to use all of that sensory information right away. So you're going to paint the color of the walls. You're going to tell us what it smells like. Honestly, I would probably start with sounds because it's a delivery and there are sounds. Maybe some screams, maybe some, oh my lord, what is that? Right, so I'm going to have to describe that. The, the you know, doctor's voice reverberated off of the sterile institutional green walls. You know, you want to cram as much sensory information into that setting as possible so that the world becomes real for your reader even if it's a completely fictitious world like Neil Gaiman style fictitious world 
It is still particular to these characters. It is their home. You are going to live in it with them for just a little while. So give yourself a comfy place. It has texture. It has motion. It has light. It has darkness. It has shadows. It has all of these things um, that your actual world has also. So you're going to spend your time here painting the picture. And as you move your characters through this arc, they have to interact, they have to have experiences. There are opportunities for them along the way to make different decisions. Maybe she doesn't meet the nice guy. Maybe she like is picking up dog poop and he walks by and then they never actually have that opportunity. You get to decide what kind of interactions and what kind of people these are and how they move, literally. Well, okay, not, not literally, but like the physicality of them. And you're, again, you're gonna use your senses to describe that so that we are following a particular person through each of these little mini decisions. That requires you to think about what the peasant smells like versus what the priestess smells like. A priestess is most likely gonna smell like offerings, incense, cold stone, shadows, something like that. Whereas a peasant would smell like the earth and B.O. and you know maybe dandruff, I don't know, dirty peasants. Um, so, and, and you can see that in this story too, like the doctor, very particular doctor, has had a very particular experience. So you want to honor that by describing the disheveled, you know, what are those calves called? Surgical calf or something that's like slowly falling off his otherwise perfectly coiffed hair and his like brand new sock knees that he's wearing. I had an experience with a guy once, a pediatrician right after Ellie was born, it was terrible. I didn't like him. Um, but you wanna you wanna make sure that you're you're painting the picture with words here and then again here at the end. The climax is important. It's the thing that your story is about. But you wanna leave your readers still sort of immersed and drifting out of that world. So the, the falling action is another place where you go heavy on the setting. Hopefully your character has moved from one setting, delivery room, to another setting alone and happy in the jungle. It's a terrible story. Whatever, I use it every time. Um, and, and that way you have a range of experiences and a range of settings that you can describe for your, for your reader. Hopefully that will go over well. Does that help? Thank you for joining in with our Mesopotamian storytelling project. We've learned a lot in the process and our creative writing stories should be spectacular. We'll be sharing them soon. Stay tuned for more.